Quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms, or our story buildings, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate, where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, sonar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. When we touch down, but I broke down. Yamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. him that the last time he sent the money it was not enough to buy all the provisions oh sorry i forgot to tell him are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions yes, yes. but don't you know about baluo baluo what is baluo baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop and you don't have to worry about the exchange rate. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money.
Hello and welcome to the brunch on Kerfato Live. I am Lavin Cham, welcoming you once again to our weekly current affairs program here on Kerfato Live. This week we continue our coverage of the voter registration. We will have updates of uh, this very important and first exercise in our electoral process leading of course to the December 4th presidential elections. We will also talk about the so-called Rock the Vote concert that is due this night. We will discuss the controversy that surrounded this otherwise well intended and well intended uh, with well intentions of course. The organizers are in the studio and, we, and they will take us through. We will of course touch on the controversy surrounding the planned strike by the members of faculty and staff association of the University of the Gambia. And this and other issues, of course, we will discuss in the studio. So I'm pleased to be joined in the studio by, well, a gallery of uh, activists, if you like, members of the civic society and uh, lecturers from the University of the Gambia. Um, Sertmati Jao is here. Sert Sertmati, welcome. Uh, okay. Idris Sanjay. Yes, uh, Sanjay. <laughs> Idris, uh, sorry, who also shares, uh, 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 I mean, the same profession with. Uh, Asad Mati being lecturer at the university and Mumudu, uh, Muhammad Esba is the vice president of the Gambia Press Union and also a member of the Civic Society Coalition. Welcome, gentlemen. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Well, just before we come on air, of course, the United Democratic Party's uh, uh, organizing secretary has come with a statement announcing that uh, their election monitoring team has been attacked in Kanilai. We will uh, discuss that too. We will get to the IEC and of course maybe the police to see what is the uh, update on that. That will come later in the program. But gentlemen, welcome. Let's, let's go straight to this uh, university crisis. Um, what we know is that in fact we were supposed to have both the management and the staff uh, association who are intending to go on strike. But as we speak now, all have been called to a meeting uh, supposedly brokered by students and they are all hopeful that that meeting will really bring about a breakthrough so they couldn't make it to the studio but this program should have been squarely on the crisis at the university all the same we'll touch uh, on the sidelines if we can set Mati, you are supposed to be a member of the staff association let me ask you first were you in favor of the strike or not uh thank you mr cham i mean uh, I'm always in favor of industrial action, if, oh. especially if they are for the for the greater good of the society. Okay. Um, I did not attend the meeting, but then of course I I, I saw that a overwhelming majority of the staff um, yes. wanted to go, and of course as a staff I also feel that I am affected in one way, and and so therefore I I supported that. But of course I'm open for dialogue because of course even the staff associations are open for 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 that. So at least what is happening is more around crying for help, and and I think. I mean, it also speaks generally to the problems of higher education in Gambia. And so, therefore, I am very much interested in ensuring that those issues are also addressed. But, uh, let me talk to you now. Esa, what are the bone of contentions, Esa, from your point of view? Thank you, Mr. Charm. Um, <clears throat> just like said, Mati, I'm equally a member of the Staff Association. Yeah. Um, even though not an executive member, um, I did not also attend the Congress where the decision to embark on an industrial action mm -hmm. was taken. Um, first, I want to state that industrial action is normal in any progressive society. Um, people have to understand that because when this crisis started, especially the sit down strike on Thursday, a lot of talks are going around, people saying that students should not suffer, you know, stop this sit down strike, especially when exam time. I'm like, industrial action is normal in any progressive society. For pro society to progress, people must debate over issues, and what the UTG FSA is doing. Um, the crisis in UTG, the problems have been going on ever since. UTG is 22 years old today now, and then some of these basic things um, should have been addressed. Um, the Staff Association has been engaged since the coming of the current executive to power. Um, they've been... Let me let me clearly state that I'm not speaking for the staff association. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we are not. Yeah. We are not. We are, yeah. analyzing. We are not. We are just no, we are to analyze, analyze oh, our own right. problems. Exactly. Huh? So um, <laughs> the staff association has uh, been been engaging management over some of these issues. Um, you know, a lot of them surrounding over the, especially the recent one has been the 
position of the vice chancellor. Mm -hmm. um, the current vice chancellor's term will expire in September. Mm -hmm. And of course, there needs to be someone else because it seems like the governing council. But I think um, they are advertising the position. That's what I'm saying. Um, it seems like the governing council mm -hmm. um, does not want to renew the contract of the current vice chancellor, meaning a new one is coming. So I think where the bone of contention is um, the, the procedures yes. um, to advertise this position. Um, because the president of the staff association, Dr. Jiba, mm -hmm. decided to resign from the joint side committee mm -hmm. of the vice chancellor because of some issues. According to him, one of them is, you know, it, it's not transparent, kind of, because the what the composition of the joint side committee itself, mm -hmm. which includes the registrar, according to him, mm -hmm. um, contradicts is that either the bylaws or the I think the bylaws of the University okay. of the Gambia, mm -hmm. and then also um, they're not open, they are not transparent about it because at some point they said. You know, there will be emails, and then he asked that all the joint committee members will have access to that email mm. where people who advertise, interested candidates can, um, can ad, um, apply for. Mm. But then they said that only two people can get access to that because they're afraid that, oh, some might leak the emails or the information. <laughs> and he was like, well, how about those who are there? They can yeah. also <laughs> forward the emails and all that. <laughs> so these were the bonus. But then those are not the, that's not the only issue. Mm. The other issues include... Um, the 150 million dollars yes, is where that did this come from? I, I, yeah, I mean, this is normal in this country. You see, that is why people have to be very cautious about the the the, the strategies used by politicians. This has been happening since Jamie's time. Mm. Most students who are claimed to be under higher education scholarship don't actually pay a dime to UGG. Mm -hmm. All that the government does is to to sell the message to our people out there that oh we are sponsoring students to the University of the Gambia but all that they do is to give them award letters and they come and register so these these loans have been there or these monies have been there accumulated, accumulated since Jamie's time and we thought with the coming of the borough government they would have addressed this I was surprised when I realized that you high education OCUTG 150 million dollars is wow. it seems like um for me, because this issue was raised way mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. when the staff association said, we will demand, I remember I was in that meeting, mm -hmm. we will demand for higher education to pay mm -hmm. the debt they owe to UTG. Mm -hmm. And some members were like, no, management should do that. Yeah, staff what, what would I want? What is the business of the staff? No, the staff association is saying that if management... They benefit directly from Of course they benefit, because if these monies but, are but, in, but it would be... They, must they make it their principal, even a demand? No. The, one would say, what is their I principal? Think, the I think, management I, I, should pursue that. I think, I think, Mr. Cham, there is something we need to change in this country. Right. This Masla has syndrome need to change in this okay. country. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. For people to be so diplomatic with the truth and say, oh, it's the management that should do that, let's leave it in the hands of the management. Yes is something a cake mm -hmm. and will not help us do you understand if yes. management cannot demand that yes. the staff association is a stakeholder in the university of the gambia okay. so if they feel like the debt or the money that higher education is owing mm -hmm. the university is not actually helping mm -hmm. is determining the development or the welfare of the staff mm -hmm. they will demand for it okay. if this management cannot demand for it then the staff association can demand for it okay. so with regards to some other issues there are a lot of issues anyway so that means uh, when we hear about this 150 million, mm -hmm. people, people were wondering, what is this? But many people thought it was salaries and allowances. No, 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 no. Or no. to the, to the <laughs> lecturers. No, it's but you are not clarifying that what actually happened is the Gambia government under Jamme and probably under Barrow. No, it's not probably, it's certainly under Barrow. Okay, certainly under well. Barrow mm. will claim that we are sponsoring so and so students, mm. a so and so amount, and they don't bring this money to the university. Exactly. So then it remains like, uh, yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 like yeah. propaganda. Yeah, a propaganda sort propaganda. of. So, so, so some of these issues are there. And then when the crisis started, mm. I told some people that I would have also personally, personally, I would have preferred for us to still engage. Do you understand? and probably see how best we can conduct these exams. Mm -hmm. But I think also the stakeholders, especially management, mm -hmm. the, the early warning signs were there, and management was saying it when Dr. Jiba decided to resign. All that they did was mm -hmm. to go and do their usual rebuttal mm -hmm. on newspaper. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was more of a personal attack mm -hmm. on certain individuals, Dr. Jiba, and also the Secretary General, Yoron Jai. And also, at some point, the <laughs> students added some solves to the, the whole problem. When the student association or the student union came and said exams will go ahead as planned, I told them that, look, this is a conflict situation where you have a direct, two direct parties to the conflict. Mm -hmm. In conflict <laughs> situations, you can have a third party with an interest. Do you understand? Now, the two direct parties to this crisis are management and the staff association. The student's union is in the middle, a stakeholder, very important one, mm -hmm. a third party, but with an interest. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you can come as a mediating force mm -hmm. in between the two. Yes, they are doing but now. doing that, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what they're doing. But then well, the starting was bad. The starting was bad in the yeah, sense that they keep, you know, when you are in negotiation, you understand very well. Yeah. Yeah. As a mediating force there, do, they talk about impartiality. Yeah. 
do not allow to take because the each of the parties will take their stance mm -hmm. and the stance of the admin is that management is that exams will go ahead as planned mm -hmm. while the staff association is saying exams will not go ahead unless our demands are met yeah. these are the positions there yeah. so you as a mediating force mm -hmm. do not make a statement mm -hmm. That will make any of the parties feel mm -hmm. that you are siding. And, and what the staff at Students Union did was to say, what, what I told them is clearly is that when you said in your statement that students should read ahead, they should prepare and go ahead with their readings mm -hmm. and while you negotiate, I said that's totally fine and that's where you should stop. Mm -hmm. But once you said exams will go ahead as planned, mm -hmm. the staff association will feel mm -hmm. that you are siding with one of the parties, which is admin. Mm -hmm. And that was what, I, I mean, upset everybody. People like us were not very active in the strike. Mm. But then when they said this statement, and we also we were seeing <laughs> students posting on their status, exams will go ahead, we have our right, you cannot stop us. I said, exams will go ahead. Lecturers are the one to conduct exams. Yes, and and staff as management is coming telling you that deans and HODs will conduct exams. How on earth can they conduct exams? So this was what angered most of us, and we decided to be active in the strike. And we told them, Thursday, go in the morning and see whether you will do the exams or not. And they went surprising, they were disappointed. Mm. The student leaders lied to them that the exams will go ahead. Unfortunately, exams did not go ahead. And the students now, in fact, are siding with the staff now, majority of them, okay. that the students' union. They're kind of disappointed in the students' union. Mm. So leadership is not about yeah. big things, I mean, big words and all that. Leadership is about how to handle difficult situations. So now, it seems like the mutuality, yeah. the students' union let's, has lost that sense of mutuality between them and the let's followers. Tell, you have still to, uh, given us the, 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 the many, the, well, the reasons for the strike, you, we, 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 you talk about the 150 million that, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the staff association yeah, yeah, yeah. that mm -hmm. should be given to the university, you know, mm -hmm. where many will argue should be the responsibility of the management, but you said, that, you know, the staff association are equally have, you know, a share there, mm -hmm. so they, they're equally mm -hmm. concerned mm -hmm. about it. But what are the other? Yeah, a lot of other issues. Okay. Like what? Other issues are like um, the issue of retirees holding positions in UTG, yeah. which mm -hmm. according to the staff association contradicts um, the condition, condition of service. service right? mm -hmm. And also the registrar, for instance, um, being the overseer of HR reporting to him, yeah. already when there is a HR director, yeah. director already, we have a director of HR, yeah. but he's still also um, holding the position and according to the staff association, mm -hmm. receiving allowances for, for those positions i mean the, the demands are too many i'm not sure whether i can get but them offset, but these are the most important or the crucial issues yeah. um that the staff association has outlined and they believe that these things will be resolved mm -hmm. so it's not very much a case of staff association or staff not getting paid on time or not getting allowances due to them no 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 no, 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 no because, because, because the that. staff association in fact not long ago fought for the increment of salaries with the, and, with they the and we are enjoying we are enjoying that uh, you know so, and so, so <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think for me, yes. you see, sometimes we, uh, and I think it's very difficult that myself and Esa are part of the whole process, <laughs> but also we're removing ourselves from the discussions yeah. and trying to analyze to ensure people. But so, of course, our biases will be there. Yeah. And I think people should, I mean, should, should, should look at that because we're already directly involved. Yeah. So, but for me, the, the way I see it is that some of these demands are beyond management. Mm. Of course, we know, like, for instance, the 150 million. Yes. And these are issues that the management cannot address. But yes. we, are, we are not fighting the management for that. We are yeah. fighting, I'm saying more we, because, us. yes, because we are demanding so, so, so from... You know, you know, we are helping. Part of the reasons for the strike actually is anger at the heavy yeah, that, of Mohas. That's why I said, exactly, yeah. what, that, that's why I said the problem now, I, I, and I said, did mention that, that it's been looming for quite some time now, is that the signs have been there, but it's the problem of higher education in this exactly. country. Exactly. Yeah, but you most, know? most, most, most the students suffer too. From I mean, your, the, from the, your, from the your students... Product, from your strikes, just because you're angry with Mohas, and not necessarily your personal well-being. I mean, I mean, you see, money is crucial for the development of any university. Absolutely. Our university is highly underfunded. I mean, the, the research, I mean, it's very recently where they started giving people few thousands to, oh. to, to, to conduct research. 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 Our job is not to just be there teaching. It's okay. about, um, so you know, so generating knowledge, standard quality. local knowledge. Here, like most of us, we bring books from outside. It's very limited books, for instance, in the political science department that you have. I How see. much money is being spent in those I issues? Yeah. And then talking about that you have, you have, I mean, a, 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 yes. a, a government yes. that 
usually yeah. politicize the fact that they are providing scholarship in the, in the long run they are not they are under funding the, the the university we are talking about how do we invest more mm. in the higher education sector mm. because there is like what is the budget in the higher education so in budget? Other words, this track is actually designed to highlight to draw attention to exactly. all these issues exactly it, it is it is okay. and that, but then the the, the trigger yeah. you know in many things like you discuss this course until such a time that's that something trigger, triggers yes. and the, the trigger is the, the issue of the road. yes is vice the vice issue road. of the vice chancellor ah, and so for me i'm still trying to find out what the real issue is in yeah. time because i know of course the debate has been well you are legal it is legal we follow the condition of service we do not follow the condition of service but at the end of the day i mean there are genuine grievances mm -hmm. and some of them are beyond management some of them had to do and even that's why i think utg fsa said we, they're not gonna because they've been meeting exactly. with management exactly. they don't want to meet management but ensure that people from the office of the president the national assembly even higher education are there yeah. to also ensure that at once and for all we address these issues and then we move and but everybody agrees that dialogue is the is the yeah. is the way and, 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 and we support and, that and as yeah. we speak that dialogue is supposed to yeah it's on it's on yeah, right yes. right just to uh, Marit, let's take let, let me have your perspective you being uh, impartial, <laughs> even though this name yeah. will try as much as possible yeah. to be impartial, <laughs> but you, you we really cannot, we cannot they, cannot, they cannot disconnect themselves <laughs> yeah. from sure. the issues. Sure. So, how do you see the argument, you know, of the uh, university staff association versus whoever is watching from this, you know, from, from a neutral ground to see which of these two groups, the management and the association, have been, are, are behaving reasonably? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think um, definitely, um, I think government is, is the problem. You know? Really? Yeah, government is the problem. Mm. Um, because um, looking at this, uh, you know, debt is huge. And then how can a university be functional without, you know, having these monies? Um, it is, the university is underfunded already. But the monies that they deserve to get, yeah. that is theirs. To, to to operationalize the, the you know the, the their policies and programs. I think it is important for government to definitely look into this issue and then take it seriously. It is it should not be just between the administration and obviously the the uh, lecturers association or the staff association. It should be beyond that. Uh, I think the president is the vice chancellor of the university. The chancellor, sorry, sorry, the chancellor of the University of mm -hmm. the Gambia. He should, he should even be part of this he discussion. Should yeah, he should take personal interest and resolve the matter one, once and for all. Because 150 million, we've seen, you know, other priorities that have been given, like traveling. You know, yes. look at when the COVID-19 came, and then we started, you know, vireman, wiring money all over. From, from travel expenses. Yeah. Why can they use that strategy to ensure that this, this issue is, is taken care of? I think if you leave it, left it between the, the staff and then the admin, definitely, I know the admin has a role to play, but <coughs> also the government should take, take a step mm -hmm. and ensure that this thing is, is definitely um, you know, taken care of. Uh, I think it's important. Okay, so, so yes. gentlemen, the, 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 the talk that is going on, the talks that is going on now, um, having discussed all the areas that uh, you, you've covered here in this country, where do you think it will lead to? Would it, for example, uh, lead to the uh, resolution of this, this money that is pending? Because like you said, the money is not just for the welfare of lecturers, but for to, to fund things like research and, and many other student things. labs you yeah. know you see you see i mean sometimes we are in the utg yeah. we understand you like me i went to utg from zero to yeah. you know even did my masters there and continue teaching there so yeah. we know we have grown with the problem of the university we have seen improvement here and there yeah. but of course the money is always crucial and it's always very important because i mean management sometimes they do cannot go and ask because of course their appointment and those things might have to do with higher education <laughs> and all that yeah, yeah. and the you know the direct policy influences and all those okay, things okay. might be might be the issue yeah. but i think i think the question in addressing the problem we should not just stop at looking at it from university staff versus management or any other thing. We must look at it from a problem of higher education in this country. Exactly, yeah. And what is the problem of higher education? It is the lack of resources. Is the lack of I mean, capacity. I mean, you know, yeah. capacity yeah. issues, uh, opportunities. Yeah. Like like we are here. You know, we are like me and Esa. I always and most of us, our colleagues, we think like we're all already. Do you know how much money has been voted in the last budget for higher education? 
is yeah. mostly around it's less yeah. than three percent yeah. if, if yeah. i'm not if it, i'm not it's, you know i don't want to percent. yeah but it's it's it's, it's very minimal yeah. but then, then 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 you know within this small money yeah. you're also talking about expansion uh, creating new you know um universities i mean like we need to think seriously in this country i mean we need to Some we need of the to issues that also came was the extravagant lifestyle of the management team like uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, well, I'll it's, 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 it's not a valid point. It's not a valid point. I, I, I wanted to drag uh, my, my friend Lamentaro, the register here. He was very keen on coming, but because of this meeting, he couldn't come. But we will have a chance to put this to them. But is that an issue? Like some yeah, we, you, see, you see, Mr. Cham, yeah. Gambians, it's very easy for us to sit in our comfort zones and blame people on top, yeah. top there yeah. while without looking at what we do okay we always come since the coming of this new government people have been complaining about Barrow's extravagant lifestyle mm -hmm. yes. traveling and all that not yeah, yeah. paying per diems he went to saudi arabia for six days yeah people complain he went to guinea for three days people complain <laughs> management went to nigeria more than a week so close to two weeks university management yes the vice chancellor the deputy vice chancellor academic the registrar the finance director i think four of them or so and what they paid themselves according to sources from the staff association is i'm not speaking officially i'm not yeah, sure about no, this yes. but what they said is like close to three hundred thousand dollars is each of them wow from their podiums mm -hmm. because utg paid 300 pounds per night yeah and these are junior officers how about senior officers oh, well. for close to two weeks and then from there when they came from nigeria two three days later they went to senegal they were in Senegal when this strike started and they had to cut their trip yeah, short and come back. To come back. Do you understand? It's easy for us to blame, oh, Barrow is traveling all the time. Mm -hmm. How about us running these institutions? Now, that's one thing. Like Sid said clearly. Yeah, well, if, what if the president is traveling and the others will follow suit? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so you don't have to <laughs> well, 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 about that. Well, what the, you're saying the, is that the example should come the, from the temple. Exactly. The temple that's, uh, exactly. From, yes. that's, that's quite right. And this was a government which tells us that they were going to come into court. Exactly. And an unnecessary expenditure. And then they always complain about lack of money in UTG. Mm. That sometimes UTG, they said, will struggle to pay salaries. Okay? Now, Sid said this clearly. And I agree with him entirely. This has to do with problem of higher education in this country. Mm. Education and you see, like I always say, we cannot distinguish this from politics. Mm. It seems like government is busy politicking. Exactly. Right. We are interested in yeah. quantity than quality. Right. Mm -hmm. This has been our problem. When Yaya Jami came to power, mm. he has been building schools and hospitals in this country. Yeah. And people will say there are schools all over, yeah. there are hospitals all over. How about the quality, the quality of these there. places? Mm. You talk about University of the Gambian. Yeah. UTG has a problem with its undergraduate programs. UTG cannot sort, sort that out or solve those problems. What they are doing now is creating master's programs, wow. creating PhDs, when you, when which should be questioned. Have Undergraduates have problems. problems. People are doing biology in this university, wow. geography without the right equipment. Oh. Are we graduating these people with knowledge? And then, to add insult to injury is... They are trying to transform GTG and MDI into universities. Yes, that's through the help of the Ghanaian through University. The, I don't... It's like the UTG is having problem of the finance, UTG. resources. Yes. How, do you strengthen, how do you strengthen the undergraduate you, programs? You don't find it logical. That it's not logical, but the only thing is, you know what they want? People are struggling. I think Dr. Dr. Jiba said this in his interview, yeah. okay, the last time. It makes sense mm. that one of the legacies that President Barrow can do in this country mm -hmm. is to reform the UTG. Make sure that it is strong, so that when he leaves power, people can make reference to say, "Oh, yeah, Jame built the university, yeah. but he reformed this institution to where it is." But all Baro is also interested in is to say, "When I came to power, I created two universities in this country." <laughs> oh, yes, there we go. And we have these technocrats, people that are called technocrats yes. in government, who in ministries, who are supposed to advise, right? Exactly. And you see, UTG already has an engineering department. Yeah. Or school yeah. before transforming yeah. the DTI into a university. Yeah. Work, even though yeah. some people make their argument, strengthen this mm. department or school. Exactly. Mm. MDI, the MDI the there's a school exactly. of public administration, business and public administration. Yeah. Most of these courses that MDI is teaching or offering are offered in the UTG. Yes. We have a lot of undergraduate programs that we can produce mm. internationally. The market demand for it. Peace and conflict today should be an undergraduate program in UTG. UTG. A lot of things. But these things are not addressed. And all the politicians are interested in is quantity, quantity, quantity. And not quality. Let's create more and not quality. And so not quality. it has to do with how yeah. we devalue higher education in this country. Exactly. And people must not see this problem as UTG FSA, as he said, versus admin. Mm -hmm. 
That is why I said I am so much disappointed in some of the students yeah. because these students are supposed to be critical thinkers as far as development is concerned in this country. Mm. But they, don't, they are not critical about development issues in this country. All that you look at is someone will say, I have my exam, I want to apply for scholarship. Who's, who cares? You're interested in yourself. You're being selfish. Okay. That you want to sit for exams so that you're done with UTG. Done with you're tired with UTG. You, All the problems there. You're not concerned about how much have, how exactly much, how, how much about the ones that are the coming. The young ones that are coming. We've yes. been talking about this problem since 1999. Since 1999 up to now, 22 years of existence. Yes. The University of the Gambia is the only university probably in the whole world that rents a high school to conduct lectures and exams. Right. That was comprehensive. Hmm. When UTG started in 1999, yeah. they were renting places. Yeah, I was yeah, yeah, no, yeah. and it seems that like we are going back to that. We used to, we used to do what we call. Uh, I mean, exactly. Yeah, yeah, how can yeah, how can we have such a university yeah. operating in the 21st century? Yeah. The lecturers will even struggle to get projectors. I said, look, <laughs> this is but not now, magic. But, it's but simple. It, one can argue that uh, if all these problems accumulated 22 years on the jam, mm. you don't expect. Barrow's government, which has just come only five years, to, to, to solve all these problems. I, I can or, although you can argue I mean, that you may probably have not seen any effort within within the five see, years. See, but one can argue that he, I mean, the Barrow government no, has see, see, Mr. Mr. Chair, let me tell you what. Five no, I'm not saying all the problems. Mm. Mm. There are problems Most that are so problem. critical. Yeah. Yes. For instance, some have been solved. Like even the money, yeah? salary has been Salad, solved. Salary, no one is saying it. Even the reform has been solved. I mean, yeah, to some extent. You, the lecturers, have now got good pay. Now. It's no, better. You see, it's, it's, it's better. better. It's not better, better than when it was on the no, yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Now, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, they have done something. What I'm saying is, to reform and restructure UTG mm -hmm. to be a world class university, yeah, as Professor Ka has quality. always been saying since his time, yeah. it's not a five year job thing. Yes. So there are basic things yeah. that do, you don't require magic to do that. Okay. For instance, getting classrooms for UTG students is not magic, Mr. Okay. Cham. Yeah. Well, getting do? projectors fixed in these classrooms is not magic Absolutely. and UTG is telling us that they are renting those yeah. spending thousands of dollars thousands of dollars every month or every year to rent those okay classrooms could be built build simple classrooms for UTG students but it's not that been done in the Faraba. See, Faraba is, um, is, a, is, a, is a mighty project. What? It's a yeah. whole university campus project yeah. that cannot be done in four years or five years. Oh. It's a long term project. It is coming. But, it is coming. Exactly. It's coming. Well, it's progressing. But what we are saying right now, what you have, solve problem, is it? what you have, what you have, that will solve the problem. But what yeah. you have right now is you don't have it because the reason why UTG is still online. Yeah. This COVID, COVID is used as a pretext. Mm. <laughs> they don't have space. <laughs> they don't have space. I'm telling you, they will tell you this. None of them, none of the admin officers, yeah. ask the management if they come here, ask them why yeah. are you still online. Yeah. They will not tell you maybe, but they know they don't have space. And, and, and how, they are getting and more how effective is that online? I mean, I, I how, how effective so is that? that we don't know it's some it's of the terrible. Stars. This I mean, online thing is so terrible. It's not helping. It's compromising quality. There's a whole lot of problems the university is facing. And you guys believe that the solution is dialogue uh, is on the government. I mean, yes. I mean, and I mean, there's a. Uh, you see, you see, what is happening is UTG is also like as I said, is the reflection of what is happening in the wider society. Exactly. In today, every institution you go to, you see problems like that. But exactly. of course, the the difference between us and then you talked about the fact that I mean, on the barrel, maybe within five years. Yes. School. So for us, we don't recognize. Whether this government is new or old, as long as it is it's government, government, so government is permanent. Government. So I we agree. don't care. Like no, okay. I mean, you see, that is why you have other institutions. Yeah. Yeah. Our job is to be in academia, in the yeah. classroom, and to, to be part of community service, and that's what we are interested in doing, yeah. and that's what we are doing. Yeah, but, but, but the, but, but the, but the, the issue, those will affect you. Of course, it will, it will, it will affect us. But yeah. then that's why. Yeah. That's why one of the things that we keep promoting is academic freedom, you know, where people have the, the right, uh, yes. you know, to, to engage in academia and, and then to yeah, ensure that can, they continue they in that. And, and that's why we also, I mean, and, and I think, you know, as much, you know, people think that staff association is as controversial as it is, what they're trying to do is also to, to, to be listened. And if we cannot shape, as intellectuals or people at the university, the highest citadel of knowledge, yeah. if we cannot shape the destiny of this country, we are wasting our time. Absolutely. You know, we are wasting our time. Well, you, I know that politicians, you especially you you incumbent you governments, often don't agree with university. You you I mean, let's let them That's do that. Our job is to educate the you public. <laughs> we will do it today, we will do it tomorrow, we will do it next day. You and whatever, you however they see it, to is be, the, UTG yeah. is supposed to be the problem-solving center of this country. Yeah. Mm. I you agree. The lab yeah. where the solutions to the problems of this society are generated from. Mm. But to be honest with you, this is not the down the, the, to ridicule the institution. Yes. No. Yes. Cause, cause but the, the fact of the matter is, we are not producing problem solvers. Mm. 
in society. I agree. The UTG is supposed to, from like I always say, 22 years of existence as an institution. Yeah. We cannot even invent something from science. Our science students cannot even invent anything in this country. Mm. It is pathetic. Definitely. Today, if you have problem in this society, in this country today, mm. economic. You know, in advanced societies, when they have problems, they turn to the university. Yeah. Exactly. They call university people mm. to come and analyze and mm. propose analyze solutions and all that. Yes, Today, if you have an economic problem, and if the government, Gambia government yeah. or the state has an economic crisis, crisis yes. they cannot even turn to the university of university the Gambia. I mean, for they, solution. They, they, so the, the thing that, you know, what angers me is like we are seen as just people that will hold chocks and pens teaching. And and that's teaching. teaching. Okay. And our job is three things. Yeah. Teaching, mm -hmm. community service, and knowledge production. Knowledge that's, production. that's research, exactly. teaching, and yeah. community service. And this is what we are doing. That's exactly. why we come out and then talk to the people exactly. because it's part of the community service. Exactly. And so therefore, you know, there, there's, a, there's a need for serious thinking ah. as to how do we improve. Like I teach mostly Gambian politics. Where most of the books that I'm, I, I, I teach are older books. What is stopping from the university? not the university but government to say well we have created a national research fund Thank even you. let it be outside the university where people can access that these are simple things it requires just moving monies from here and then putting yeah. it there yeah. i mean it's always not also about the money look at us we're all masters holders two masters and still we're struggling to go and do a phd what is stopping from the university or government sponsoring or supporting people to go and do and then come back and teach you know these are issues critical issues that i mean higher education should start addressing building the foundation you know, because at the end of the day, our problems are local, the solutions are local, and it must be driven locally. And this is the this is the issue. Just 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 to clearly state, yeah. like you said, yeah. universities all over the world are built on the core values of knowledge production yeah. and dissemination yeah. to research and service the society. Now, UTG, sadly, you go lecturers will see themselves as just for teaching. Mm -hmm. Semester you come, course outlines of students, you teach, you give them exams in class. Sure. What is this? Define mm -hmm. this. Explain this. It is not helping our development of this country. You're done. That is it. You can even you have lecturers in the university for ten years without even publishing an article. Wow. This is happening in this country, in this university. That is why I always say, even during the summer, during the summer, when they said summer classes, what I'm saying, I said I am not teaching. Summer is for my community service. It's for my research. During the semester, I can teach, hmm. but summer I'm dedicating it to community service yeah. and research. I agree. I'm not teaching. I'm not teaching during summer, but then we all just after money, money, go and teach, gather money, and that's it. We are not adding any value to this society. But <laughs> Mr. Bar, Mr. Bar, finally on this topic before we move on to something else, so impartially, of course. Why do you think all this is? How do you think there can be? To all this yeah, I, I think, I, as I said, um, the president as the chancellor of the university should definitely take this. Uh, the political will mm -hmm. should be there, mm -hmm. you know, because um, everything boils down to government commitment. Um, look at the higher education, uh, $260 million mm -hmm. compared to other of other, well, other that's what the, yeah yeah that's, that's what the budget gives. yeah that's the budget so, so even, even if you take check, check out the areas uh, 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 exactly. how much will be left exactly yeah. so and how much will be left that's for all the people yeah the people yeah, yeah. For people I, like and institutions you understand so yeah. I, I i think definitely if we want to be serious about education mm. we should and, definitely and people in other sectors will say also what about us that's, but that's but, but education is the base. It's, it's education, it's health, health, agriculture. But all this, this is unaffordable compared, the, to, that's compared what, to non important things. But like now that is why I said we have to be physical exactly. we have to be physical discipline. The highest agenda or the highest article or the highest item on the budget is debt payment, which Good. is seven billion. Good. Seven billion. Our tax revenue is about thirteen billion. Now, if you remove seven billion from thirteen billion, how much are we living with? So, how much are we having? So, I believe that we have to be serious, you know, um, like uh, diversify our productive base, ensure that we have more money, and then you know take loans, less lesser loans, 
and then even grants we should not even be just just depending on grants or on loans i think this government should be very serious with regards now, to now education something i was going to say but that might sound too political wow well <laughs> yeah, but, but, but that's the but but, the, but <laughs> not political but these are the but these are the but these are the realities academics are political wow. yeah so, so we are not partisan what we are but let's yeah. hear what you want and so yeah. we, I, I just wanted to say he's yeah. talking about money the yeah. economy and all that yeah um i'm not an economist but then these are basic things for instance what the government government is doing currently yeah most of these road projects um are funded from the economy the exactly. domestic economy yeah. exactly. which is killing our economy and then the president or the government is proud of that to tell gambians that um for the first time in the history of this country you know these road projects are fully funded by the gov gov yeah. government yeah, yeah. and people are comfortable with yeah, that. Exactly. they think that is that is that is um that is normal so why can't we have enough locally generated exactly. money for the other things exactly. interesting well said mati um uh, and of course um uh, his colleagues from the University of Njai and uh, Ba, thank you for those comments on the Well, I must say that we actually invited the management of the uh, university's faculty, uh, rather the university itself, the management, Lamintaro Register, was to be with us as well as members of the student union. But, like we are saying, they were called to an emergency meeting, which uh, is really in progress at the moment. But we will have them on the show next week, certainly, when we hope uh, most of the issues uh, would have been resolved. Now, ladies and gentlemen, like I was saying, before we come on, there was a breaking news. The mayor of Kalifun, who is the National Propaganda Secretary for the UDP, uh, said on his Facebook uh, that uh, uh, the election maritime team has been attacked in Kanilai, and his deputy, who is heading the monitoring unit of the UDP, Brahim Adiba, got injured, and their vehicle had their windows smashed. We are hoping to link up with the IEC as well as the police and maybe Taliban Suda himself or Adiba for an update. Uh, but that's, 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 that sounds ugly, isn't it? You, I mean, I mean, this is all. This all come to lend credence to concerns and anxieties among the people. That uh, unless we mellow down on our rhetorics and our conducts and be more tolerant, there can't be problems. I mean, I mean, definitely. I think this is unfortunate, and um, um, it is sad yeah. uh, because I thought that our politics or our this generation of Gambians are mature enough mm -hmm. to understand that violence has no place um, within our society. Yeah. And um, and 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 you know, just yesterday I was discussing about the possibility of seeing violence yeah. um, emanating from the from the electoral process, and yet we are at the registration process where yeah. everybody is free to just register, mm -hmm. get your card. Yeah. It is not yet the voting yeah, stage vote. and then yeah. we, are, we are seeing this i think i mean any sort of violence that's why i was saying that any sort of violence that has been meted out whoever it's from who to who i mean the culprits must be must be addressed and i think the law must take um you know must take its course to to address the situation and i think we need to like like you said we need to tone down um some of these issues especially things that we do social media <laughs> i mean just eat uh, your benachin and then sit in your room make a video you know, send it. You you get people, um, you know, get people agitated and all those things. And so we are we are we are generating things that might turn into into a situation that we all do not expect. And I already we are seeing the signs. And I think there needs to be, um, uh, you know, there needs to be um, serious actions that need to be taken against the the, the culprits so that you know these elements. Um, do not continue to repeat itself. You know, we call for an orderly election. We call for a violent-free yeah. election, and um, you know, and and I think that needs to be the message that needs to be driven across the country and Before across this, the world. Before this, there was Manduar case. Uh, of so course. far, what we have gathered um, was that there are there have been problems with, um, uh, I mean, uh, Tuba Manduar and the original Manduar. That is, uh, if that's the way to put it about two Alkalolu uh, all coming with their attestation tables and there was fracas, uh, some got arrested, although they have not been released and we heard that the IEC now has opened a registration center in uh, Manduar Tuba. Uh, that's how it was solved. What was your take on that? Have, having had all the issues that have been uh, said to be the issues that led to it. Yeah. Like you? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, um, <coughs> With regards to these issues, it, they, they just speak to the reality that this country is so polarized um, ahead of the 2021 presidential election. Yeah. Um, sometimes people will want to be so optimistic 
Um, I don't like to be to, to, to sound too pessimistic, but then these are early warning signs. And people thinking that, oh, Gambia is a peaceful country. Mm -hmm. People are peaceful. There will be no problems or no classes. I mean, <clears throat> we, need to, we need to be a bit worried and careful about these things. They need to be addressed. But like, like I always say, I think um, it all boils down also to the leadership of um, these political parties. Um, we need to be so serious about this election. Um, political leaders need to caution their supporters um, to, to, be, to be vigilant and also to preserve the peace and stability of this country. Okay. 2021 election there is a lot at stake. Um, some political parties obviously is a do or die for them. Uh -huh. um, they know if they lose yeah. this election, probably <laughs> it's going to be a natural death. Yeah. Yeah. So that is why I think you know all every, all all political parties are just you know taking this not a not a light combat. You know, trying to make sure that they get what they want. But then, like said, said it's so worrying. You know, the registration sent um, process. Just in the registration process, we are seeing these issues coming out. How about elections day? Um, this is my biggest worry. And I think the IEC, the police political parties have a role to play. Do you understand? In this. Um, no. We need to engage in, especially CSOs. CSOs have a big role to play in this. Exactly. Um, we know the, the, the role that they played in 2016 election. Mm -hmm. um, the elections were peaceful. Yeah. Um, there were no major incidents or clashes where, I mean, uh, that, that could threaten the peace and stability of the country. 2021 is equally a very important election. Yeah. And, you know, the CSOs, MS is here, mm -hmm. CT is here. We all need to be there. This sensitization need to continue. Mostly, I think the concentration is on. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say that it doesn't happen, but then mostly the concentration is on educating voters on the importance of voting on the importance of registration. But how about peaceful election? Yeah, peaceful. Peace. Yeah. The sensitization should also focus on that. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. there are three sensitizations that should take place. When you sensitize people about voting registration, which will be done. Now that is done, the next stage of the sensitization should be peaceful election. CSOs need to engage in that. I don't know whether they are going to start looking for fun to embark on that. Then from there, we talk about the importance of voting. Do you understand? But then peaceful election, as far as this 2021 election is concerned, I think to, CSOs have a role to play in ensuring that we have a very peaceful, violent election. You know election what I have, what I have not heard much about is the inter-party. Because before all this, the yeah, inter-party yeah. were very active and they, in fact, they said they, 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 all what they are hearing was before the election and the registration process, they want a common approach because they believe that will ensure that each party is satisfied to uh, you see, know, alleviate all the. But there's not seem to be much. See, see, Mr. Of Cham, the CPC, the, 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 the process, problem, the problem is, is as, as a body. What the is problem it? is, yeah. the problem. I think, I think, like I said, this country is so polarized. Really? Sometimes the political parties, some of these political, I can say, in fact, coming to the inter-party committee mm. level. Yeah. Um, probably some of them agreed to be part of it because they have no choice. Yeah. Do you understand? You see, the intention, like Gambia, I think the problem is that we look too much on ourselves, party, 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 instead of the nation. Now, most of them will be there just to protect their interests. And what they preach and what they practice or what they believe in are quite different. Agreed. So they have a role to play. If you talk about peaceful election, yeah. you want a peaceful election, the inter-party committee should be there what to ensure. It me that they were making too much noise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were concerned on, about mostly about this electoral crucial laws matter, and all that. On not. this crucial matter, they, 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 they seem to dead I mean, silence. Last, last time. Uh, as far as common approach to thing is concerned. I think periodically they organize it. I mean, of the course. last time, of course, one of them said they had intended to approach the registration process Collectively. Totally, you know, collectively, they even went to get funding. The funding didn't come, and then that's I mean, the end of it. I mean, but, but you know, you know, Lavin. Sometimes, sometimes when we come here and then talk from our civil society perspective or academia, sometimes people think like we are disconnected we're from the politics. reality. Yeah. But you see, sometimes we go to the meeting halls where we look at some of these issues, and we have serious debate with the political parties. Yeah. You know, even the issue of attestation today is creating tension. Yeah. We raised those issues, we stood, we said so many things that this is going to create problem in the society. Remove those things. And we're just saying, oh, you are wasting our time. Like, like sometimes they don't think civil society exists. I mean, like sometimes they see like we exist just to waste their time or yeah. drill the process. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I, I really like the idea of the IPC. Yeah. The IPC, I mean, is, you see, one of the things that we don't do in this country is to sit and talk. Yeah. Because you, you know, like he said, we just talk at each other, yeah. manla, kila, you know, those kind of stuff will not move anybody. In this country, nobody is so powerful that you can drag me in my ears and say and I should them. do this. No. I will never. Why would I do that? Absolutely. So we are all 
full only people, talking and dialogue. You know, only right? talking and dialogue. Because yeah. at the end of the day, people think that when they divide, it's the easiest, you know, they right. can rule at the end they of the day. Are, but how can you rule a divided society? Absolutely. You, you will can. not. You see, it takes only, maybe as I can highlight that, because they are the international people, like yeah. very small sick population yeah. to create chaos in this country yeah. and will affect the Everywhere. rest of the million population. Absolutely. And so therefore, the IPC is very central and critical to this issue. Of course. But of course, civil society, you know, our job is also to continue to do those things. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean, the, the most critical actors are the political parties because it is their members. It is not civil society versus the political parties. It is political party versus political parties. And therefore, they the wants to address that. We have seen over the past where some leaders have been talking, but then the message is not reaching the ground. And how does the message reach the ground? It must be that the ground must see that the political leaders are also engaging they are dialoguing they are communicating sometimes they meet we were, we were here during the jonathan discussion mm. yeah. it was a very good opportunity but what how did it end up yeah. it be, end up becoming personal <laughs> contest we have done this this one this one this one that we are not interested in that what we are interested is in the continuity of the state the survival of the people the production of you know ha people having access to those resources and i think this is the real truth that the political leaders should take and that they are the people that are responsible for the unity or division of this country. The way they are divided is the way that the society will be divided. If they are united, society will unite. And being united doesn't mean like you're not, you're not gonna contest. Yeah. We want competition. Exactly. If there was no politics, me and SI will not have job mm. because we are teaching Politics, we are teaching right. those kind of stuff. So those things we appreciate those things in society, but it must be done based on the set rules and not based on personal interests and the rest of it. Hello. Alright, as we were saying we were talking uh, about the UDP I'm um, saying that, um, I mean, the uh, election monitoring team in Canada was attacked. Uh, we hope we can link with the police and the IEC, but now we are moving to the UDP. We have the spokesman, Almame Funding Tal, on the line. Almame, good afternoon and welcome to the brunch. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jam. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, we just had this breaking news from the mayor's Facebook, Talib Ahmed Ben Souda, reporting that uh, the UDP election monitoring team has been attacked in Kanilai, and uh, Ibrahim Adiba, who is leading the team, is injured, and one of your vehicles had its window smashed. Um, what can you tell us exactly what happened? All of that is true, and uh, the party leader was also informed uh, in the middle of our own uh, uh, and he has contacted the co-chair of the inter-party committee, who is Honorable Abdul Nyasi, mm -hmm. to convene an urgent meeting to discuss uh, uh, this uh, particular Thank you very much for that update, Almame Fandintal, you had here, the spokesman for the uh -huh. United Democratic Party, saying, well, they've got information, they can confirm that uh, there was an incident in Canela involved in their election monitoring team. We will try as much as possible to get the IEC, because he's reporting that uh, allegedly, uh, reportedly, the IEC registration officer who was attacked there. 
Um, of course, we will talk to the police before the end of the program and see whether we can have uh, uh, their account or their information on the matter. But, uh, like you said, uh, it's not promising when you hear this kind of stories. Uh, Mohamed. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely unfortunate. Um, I think people should see political parties as, as very key, um, important key stakeholders in the in ensuring a credible elections, um, you know, um, especially at the registration level. So um, people should not be attacking each other or people should not um, attack political parties or opposing parties as well. So I believe, um, you know, this is an early warning sign that uh, we should be very, we should intensify our quest to, to, to maintain the peace in We're the Gambia. IEC. I, yeah. mean, I mean, these are some of the things we thought that IEC would have been actively working to avoid. So I'm disappointed there that when he said uh, they have contacted uh, I, their own members in the I, I, IPC because I think, I mean, they've been absent for too long in, the, in, the, in this process. <laughs> I mean, they, 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 they've been now, I think they have an uh, office. Uh, yeah, uh, but then the, the, issue, the issue is, yeah, I think IPC need to be very visible. Yeah. Uh, more engaging and not just to be having meetings among themselves. Exactly. I mean, there needs to be that support where they can, you know, go ahead and then do some of those, um, some of those engagement. Even have, I mean, community networks. Mm -hmm. You know, because you see, you see, politics when when parties meet and discuss <laughs> over ideas, mm -hmm. there is nothing beautiful about, about it. About it. You know, and and some of the meetings that you see, you, when you see when you see the leaders meet, maybe inside there are things that they are hiding, but there the relationship and all those things. I'm I'm saying if people see those kind of stuff they mm. will they will they will behave in a in a normal way i grew up in this country i mean the election used to be very tense but for people to attack i mean it's, it's also new stuff and and i think that should be definitely um definitely worrying i'm not sure whether it was happening before 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 or in some other areas mm. but i think right now it must be worrying and ipc iec the security all of us need to need to ensure that we guard against that yeah because yeah. one of the things that uh the IPC and others, I think their job should focus on. You know, you hear and there, you see, you hear political, you know, political party supporters or, you know, stalwarts or militants said, oh, this place is a no-go area for this party. This place is a no-go area for this. <laughs> and, you know, in time, this built into people who the are Perception, ignorant. yeah. Even color, even color. Yeah, color. now, yeah. The minute you put on a color, like color. you've been, yeah. you've been, you see, you, uh, I mean, like, it's because... It's all lack of political education. Mm. Is and this is where we took <laughs> IPC, the National Civic Society, as a National uh, Civic Council. Education, all should have played a role. People would should have known well, you know, by now mm -hmm. that every political grouping can go to anywhere and campaign and then leave, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think, Mr. Chan, what we need, we needed national discourse uh, before the elections. Uh, political parties should definitely come together and discuss, see eye to eye and then see how best we can resolve some of our differences. Uh, if that is not happening, I bet there will be violence in this election. Well, we are trying as much as possible to get uh, Honorable uh, uh, Amul Nyas, who is the MP for Kansala, where this thing happened, and as well as the police and uh, perhaps maybe uh, IEC, who have promised that they will be on the line with us as we progress. But now, let's go over to another thing. Uh, everything is political now. There's supposed to be this so-called rock the vote concert, which, uh, you know, is calling on fans, music fans of uh, Gambian music that actually are gathering tonight to have a free concert, free in the sense that your only entrance is to be in possession of a voter's card. Now, when the news emerged in the first, certain members of the political stakeholders said they are not advising their supporters to go to the show because uh, allegedly they believe that once you present your voter's card, it's going to be copied and will be sold or something, <laughs> you know, sinister will be done with the ID card. The organizers had to come out to clarify the issues, saying that actually this concert is really uh, just a, an awareness campaign for young people to be motivated to acquire voter's cards. So, and you know, it, as it happened, members of my <coughs> parents are involved in, in this also. <laughs> so I go straight to Satmati. Satmati, why should uh, a simple matter of uh, 
show me your voter's card. I give you a ticket to a concert. <laughs> I mean, how can that degenerate into a, a hula balu as we had in the past few days? Now, you see, I have the tickets. Yes. Uh, but I have no voter's card. You have no voter's so, uh, card. So you just show me, I cut and I give so you. So even myself, if I ah, show if you, my If you show me now, your voter's card and you want to attend, I'll just cut and then give it to you. So that's what happened. You don't necessarily have to come with the, uh, the voter's card. To what the are we going to do? We are not. We are not running for office. Okay. We have no interest in people's choice. What uh -huh. we want to do is to people to come out and participate. You see, that's why I said civil society is not partisan. Like, you know, <laughs> they've been boxing us everywhere. Yes. You are NPP, you are this, you are that. Maybe, let them, let them maybe, box your, you. met, maybe your method of uh, sensitization might look queer and suspicious to them. I mean, you see, just, you it, just sitting here drinking your coffee, somebody uh, will have a different idea. Ah, uh, okay. And yes. so we are, we are, we, we understand that. Yes. This is the situation where we are. Yeah. But nobody will prevent us from doing what we feel we should do and how we're going to do that. Nobody's going to tell us how we're going to do that. And let's face it, it was the supporters of the UDP who, who came up with this suspicion that people must not go there with their voter scat because something can happen. Although they're not seeing thanks to your clarification, uh, anything. So, I mean, I, I, for me, initially, I didn't know where the noise was coming from coming because from. I treat every noise as the same. Okay. And I know it was from the from the politicians. Yeah. I did not know whether it but was But I coming. can show that I, I, I had UDP. Uh, yeah, I mean supporters and did I say that? Yeah. So yeah, that's I what mean, I can. Remember. So, but then the interest, the interest that we have as civil society coalition, and I think MS will also, inc I mean, add to that, is mm. that you know the civil society coalition on election has been here since two thousand and six. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I remember in 20, uh, 2012 or was we, I was, I was directly working on yeah. the in terms of the election observations yeah. and and all those stuff. So, so this year we decided to move beyond only observing elections on the day, yeah. and decided to see how. How can we involve improve in the process? Yes, in the process. Yeah. So for the first time, and yeah. I mean, of course, the reason why we are doing this is because the political environment has also changed. Yeah. It has changed that we today we are here. We are discussing issues. I mean, before we could not we could not discuss that. Absolutely. So when the political environment change, our of course our <laughs> idea and agenda also change because we are more flexible. <coughs> While we used to talk about social issues, now we are getting into the political discourse, and this is where sometimes we clash with the politicians because they think that it's their own area. It is not theirs. It belongs to everybody and and so 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 since then i mean we've worked on a strategy we work on those things and the concert is one because we're targeting it for the registration but the idea is to increase the number of young people that are participating in the in the in the electoral process and it's a it's a it's an intention that we want to because we know that in this country young people like music and you know and sports, sports and all those things and they went on a caravan they went around the country yeah, they okay. went on a caravan even giving t-shirt you only had to show your your voter card and they give you t-shirts because this is also to ensure that we 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 ensure that the electoral process is not just too boring that focuses on you know these things but because you know you want to ginger uh -huh. the the younger generation to to to, to participate mm. but of course i mean sometimes if politicians the way they see things and the way we see things uh, is, is is different they can box us they can put us to wherever they feel like we belong that is theirs they is their opinion yes, they can follow, say that you follow the yeah, it's part of follow, you, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah I, 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 I've been following. Um, initially, when this thing, um, when the idea came, I, I, I really supported it. Um, I said, look, music is a chain, it's a, it's a tool for change. It's a driving force of message. Um, this is used in many countries, you know, where political systems have been changed through music. We've seen that. And of course, this is a strategy to get or encourage young people more especially. It's not only young people that are the target, mm -hmm. I know, because yeah. it's about, you might have somebody who is not a young person, but sure. is interested in yeah. going to ST's concert. Yeah. So the person might decide to register mm -hmm. just because it's a concert that is going on. So, I mean, when, when the issue, I mean, when the issue started, I had some, like you said, um, UDP supporters yeah. um, trying to say that, oh, this is NPP sponsored, whatever. I had a personal, you know, conversation or quarrel, I can see, <laughs> with some people in my area, some UDP <laughs> right. supporters who said, mm -hmm. well, this is NPP. I said, look, how can civil societies be partisan? Exactly. Okay. That is not the case. But they were, they were saying that, in fact, you people are asking um, people to write their voter's card numbers. What? I said, for what? This is <laughs> mis you are misleading the public. Yeah, yeah. This has never happened. Mm -hmm. What we, we're trying to do, mm -hmm. or what CSOs are trying to yeah. do, is to encourage people. Mm -hmm. To come out and yeah. register and vote. Mm -hmm. So, if 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 people think that oh CSOs are there to be partisan, well, that is that is that is their their problem to deal with. Yeah. I mean, just like Sid Mari once said, mm -hmm. we are not asking politicians how mm -hmm. to do their job. Yeah, politicians cannot equally. Mm -hmm. 
ask us how to do our job uh -huh. um if people feel like in this country like it's normal he's uh -huh. like he said uh -huh. once you say an idea that is um that is opposite to somebody's idea your opinion mm. is opposite to somebody's opinion exactly. they box you and say you are udp you are ca do you know how many times people say i am ca <laughs> or i am doi or i'm udp people have been saying that right, say but that. then you see I'm, I'm not here to speak on anybody's behalf okay. do you understand um as cso's if we are not here to speak for anybody if you want to speak the platform is there for you to go and do it people are not here to speak for you so if you feel comfortable with what we are doing yes. that is totally fine if you're uncomfortable with it well go get your bread and butter and eat or you yeah. drink your coffee yeah. that's your problem but you're not here to influence people what they do you can have your opinion say said mati is citizens alliance say sanja is pdis sm ms is this that is your problem i'm not here to convince you about that Thank what we are concerned about is how to make sure that we have a peaceful in election process. in this country yeah. how to increase voter turnout in this country we have seen last presidential election it was poor we want to make sure that people participate in the governance process of this country Fantastic. an election is a fundamental pro a pillar of that process good thank you very much that we, have, we now have the police PRO online, uh, he is ASP, Lamin Jai, and we're going to discuss uh, some of the issues we have been discussing, and that is uh, uh, the incident in Manduar and the just breaking news about uh, reported incident in Kanilai. Um, Mr. Jai, welcome to the brunch live. Um, thank you, Mr. Tama, thanks for having us. Okay, let's start with Manduar first. Um, we had, of course, uh, there were a couple of arrests made, the police calmed the tension, etc., etc., and now the IEC is uh, setting up uh, another registration center there. We hope that will solve the problem. Um, but then, what is your updates on Manduar? Oh, very well, like you have mentioned, from the beginning we've been following up on the issues at Manduar, and up to now we're still uh, monitoring and following up there. Um, they've been temporarily granted bail before, but then we realized during the course of um, reviewing the case files that there are some issues that needed to be investigated on, and so as a result, their bail has been revoked and investigations continued with the hope that um, uh, we'll be able to exhaust those aspects of the investigation and they will, their matter will be mentioned in court as soon as possible. All right, we, you know, over the last Hour or two, we had reports that there was, uh, uh, I mean, an incident in Kanilai. The United Democratic Party is alleging that their um, registration monitoring team has been attacked. They had their car windows smashed, and uh, reportedly one of their officials monitoring too uh, was injured. Has this matter reached you, the police, your attention? Very well, it has. It has reached our attention and we have in fact um, 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 begun um, looking into the issue. Investigation has been opened into the situation. Um, the matter since it is developing, so we have decided to ensure that investigations are opened into it and we want to send a message to the people around the area to um, ensure that they uh, observe calmness and, and, and risk change so that the police will go about investigating the situation and then it will be followed by appropriate actions. Thank you very much, uh, Piero Njai, for updates on those two incidents. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you so much. Well, there we have it. Um, um, we had the Manduar, uh, the people who've been arrested and had <coughs> bail have, have had their bails revoked, uh, apparently because the police showed that the certain matters are yet to be completed in terms of investigation and he also said that they've learned about the canila incident and it's just breaking so they are investigating the matter <laughs> yeah interesting um i think um definitely this will resolve this issue um you know and then uh, like they said the matter is before uh investigation so i don't think we can 
divulge more on the issue but but like we don't want it to be like other investigations that will die down easily naturally um, you know we've seen the issues that happen though they are not related but uh, is the same issue for instance when it comes to investigation uh, the issue of Haruna Jaja other issues that have been investigated but uh, it all those issues remain futile so I believe the police should go uh, you know um, to the end of this and ensure that there is something uh, people who are supposed to be prosecuted or the matter should be resolved that because it's not about just investigating and looking the matter on the surface this thing has been happening since 2012 even beyond that but we've seen it surfaced in 2012 when there was a uh, you know some confusion and stuffs and then the order alcala was appointed and then this can bring a very uh, you know this can bring problems you know ahead of elections so i think the investigation they should fast track it they should also ensure that this matter is resolved Yes. Yeah, I mean, like, like I have been, always been saying, um, this only shows how polarized this country is. And it also shows how divided we are as a, as a nation, as a people. Um, because some of these villages that are created, you hear... Um, Mandua, Mandua, Mandua Wall of Maninka, Fula. It, it just shows that <laughs> yeah. ethnic element, mm -hmm. that yeah. ethnic dimension, the whole mm -hmm. thing. I mean, why should people create villages and name them after tribes or mm -hmm. ethnic groups? I mean... They, they, they don't have to attack that mm. e e ethnic ethnic yeah. um, nomenclature. Yeah. For me, it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, yeah. And once that happens, people feel like because that's that's a sense of identity. Yeah, you yeah, understand? Yeah. Having a village called Manduar Mandinka, having a village called Manduar Wolof, Wolof mm. it only shows that issue of identity. Mm. And wherever identity comes, there's, there's, whenever you have an identity crisis, a mm. crisis based on identity or conflict mm. be driven by identity, mm. you have a problem. Mm. Um, those are sometimes what we call in peace and conflict they are mostly deep-rooted conflicts mm -hmm. and then this is how they all start yeah. because if we're not if these things are not dealt with right now we might go into 20 30 50 years later mm -hmm. we have a whole full-blown crisis and mm -hmm. then we'll be thinking oh where did it start it's a it's a deep-rooted problem mm -hmm. And these have to do with structural issues in society. Once they are not addressed, they create more chaos in society. I mean, having to, because when I, when I had this issue, the, the, the initial version I had was that um, the Tuba, Manding, uh, Manduar mm. Tuba, mm. you know, were given land by <laughs> Manduar Mandinka, mm. and then they had their own Alcalo, according to mm. them. It was during the time of um, um, Wajuara, mm -hmm. Lamin Wajuara yeah, as um, Minister of Local Government, when they were given Alcaloship. Mm -hmm. And then now, but then somebody told me also that, look, this has not been an issue since. It's, on, it's only coming out now during this registration Politics. process. They have, having, they have found the Alcalo ever since. It has not been an issue now because it's, it's the issue. So that's why I said this issue of attestation is creating problem in this country and if it creates any problem in this country lawmakers should be held accountable for it because it seems like they still stick to this issue of attestation they wanted to continue i said it's going to create chaos in this country if there should be post-election violence mind you it might be caused by this issue of attestation i think it is what is creating all this problem the police like they said the matter is before them doing their investigation we hope like ms said it will not be a futile exercise we hope that um the culprits will be brought to justice if there are any things to address let them address it but then there should be that level of collaboration um uh, between the iec the police you know relevant stakeholders like i said i will repeat it csos have a role to play in this i don't know whether from here CSOs will meet and see what they're going to do about mm. preaching peaceful election. I mm. think this is very crucial. Mm. We are at a crossroads in this country right now. 2021 is a very important moment. It's a very important election. Like I said, some parties might die natural death. They know if they lose the election. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's really, too high. <laughs> exactly. So the, t the tension, the political environment is just too volatile. So CSOs have a role to play in it. They are doing a fantastic job. Kudos to them. CSOs are doing well in this country, but then they need to buckle up. They need to add more. Yeah, and I, and I think today's concert, we, we're talking about Rock the Vote concert, but yeah. I think in addition to that, we want to also preach yeah, peace. You know, peaceful, yeah. peaceful election. <laughs> because, I mean, and I, you, the, the, the most people that might be engaged in some sort of, you know, whether we call it gangsterism, mm -hmm. attacking other people mm -hmm. and all those things, might might likely be young, young people. And, yeah. and, and therefore, 
you know, coming to to shows where ST, Jizul and all those people, this artists are playing, and then them sending those kind of messages, we hope will go a long way in 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 addressing that. But like as I said, I mean, we need to double our efforts. But of course, I think another critical group that is very important in in addressing this issue, and as I raise a very important um, um, you know point that all these things are well, point, wait. okay. Well, we're trying actually to get the Honorable National Assembly member for uh, Fony Councillor, uh, Honorable Amul Nyas, uh, to have his view or so far information on the incident that happened in his constituency. Uh, Honorable, welcome. This is the brunch live on Kerfatu. Okay, we've been receiving uh, reports, um, you know, allegedly from the UDP claiming that. Um, the election monitoring team, that's the registration monitoring team in Canela, has been attacked, leading to an injury as well as smashing of uh, one of the windows of one of their vehicles. Uh, we just want to know from your perspective as a National Assembly member for the area, what, according to you, has happened there? Uh, thank you very much for having me on the line. Yeah. I'm actually, I wouldn't have known that something is happening in my own constituency. Yeah. I got a call from the party leader of the UDP, mm -hmm. um, the former vice president, his excellency lawyer Jose Rutabo, mm -hmm. who actually brought my attention to um, some angry youth attacking the two UDP pickup trucks who are on a voter registration monitoring exercise. Okay. And uh, when he said so, I wasn't surprised because I, I, they, they met me yesterday at the law in Bula where they came to sort accommodation, I was then there. So when he said so, I said to myself, this must be uh, the gentleman I met yesterday. Ibrahim Adiba was one of them, I, although I know few of them. So when, when he said so, I immediately rushed to the um, police station in Biam, because I suspected that upon coming from Kanilai, they may stop at the Biam police to um, lodge a complaint, which exactly was what really happened. So I met with the station officer and I asked him, and I understand this, scenario happened at um, Kanilai. He confirmed and said to me, yes, they were here, but they have left for um, Combo. So I asked for that. I said to him, what truly happened? Was there any damage or was there any injury sustained by any of them? He confirmed that yes, there was damage because one of the vehicles windscreen was smashed and uh, Ibrahim Adiba also sustained injury. And Ibrahim, when he go to the police, he even thought that he had a future. So, but they escorted him and all his colleagues to the Biam Hospital uh, just to realize that it was the impact from the stool that was making him feel pain, but there was no fracture. And then um, the situation was really unfortunate. And uh, I tried to reach out to my team leader, Herat Honorable Kabakari from Mondiata. Unfortunately, I did not get him. So I made him convinced to say that as I'm speaking to you, he is still not in the picture because I'm yet to get him on the line. But the situation has been really unfortunate, and uh, that being said, uh, we will pursue it to actually uh, establish what led to all um, this confrontation between the youth and the, the uh, UDP voter registration monitoring team. Right, Honorable, you know, you being the co-chair of the Inter-Party Committee, the IPC, <coughs> many people are wondering the apparent absence or inactivity of um, or of the IPC uh, in all this voter registration process because apparently your committee is exactly tasked to do exactly things like this like breaking down tensions and you know, avoiding letting people to understand that everybody has a right to go anywhere in the country for political reasons where is the IPC in this registration process you've been absent why Thank you very much. Um, it's a very important question. Uh, to begin with, in fact, when the party leader of the UDP called, it was his emphasis that he thinks the IPC needs to get up and intervene to avoid a replica of what happened in Kanilai, which I quite concord with him. Um, you did ask where is the IPC in the whole voter registration exercise. Um, the IPC did develop a concept mode, and then we requested funding initially from the UNDP to see how they can support us, because initially, our thought is we should embark on this voter registration exercise where all parties will come together. So if we embark on the voter registration exercise and then at the end of the day we endorse 
the exercise act as free, fair, and transparent, who is there to question what the IPC has endorsed? But fortunately, the IPC, as it may be, we don't have the forms that it takes for us to be seen in the field. But notwithstanding, we still swing to see, even if it has to be at the tail end, how we can be seen in the monitoring exercise of the voter registration. But I think said, um, we will not stop. I am trying to gather as much information as possible to enable me furnish the co-chair with what actually transpired in Kanilai this morning. There and then we will see how we can summon an emergency meeting of the IPC members to brainstorm on how do we address this issue going forward to avoid a replica of what happened. The situation has definitely been on call for and it's really unfortunate. But I think we should not only stop at that, but people should, the whole country or the whole world should see the IPC moving into action. Thank you very much, the Honorable uh, Musa Amul Nyas, the National Assembly member for Fony Kansala, for your uh, for our updates on that incident. Thank you very much, Honorable. There we have it, uh, gentlemen in the studio. We have from the local representative of the people, we had from the police and the UDP. Um, finally, your thoughts on this uh, incident. From what the Honorable, Minister, Honorable National Assembly member said, yes, he confirmed the incident happened. It was reported to Buyam. Yes, he was told there, uh, uh, there was, let's say, call it a superfluous injury on Ibrahim Adima, a member of the team, and a vehicle, uh, I mean, window was smashed. But he said he just got the information and he's going to be in touch with uh, his party leader. And he also at the IPC level, they're going to investigate the matter. Yes, Esa? Well, like you said, um, you know, the inter-party committee <coughs> has a role to play in this. Um, all stakeholders have a role to play in this. You know, the tension is so high, we all know. Um, it, just like he said, they want to avoid a replica of what has happened in this country, especially in Kanilai, yeah. um, after the 2016 election. We understand the situation in Kanilai. We understand the people of Fony, how agitated they are, you know, with regards to the party and also their... You know, the party leader, um, the spiritual party leader, <laughs> um, Yaya Jami. But then it, it, it boils down to the issue of um, political awareness. That is why sometimes I get surprised when people say that, oh, Gambians are politically matured now. Um, it, just, it just, you know, beats my imagination. <laughs> I don't really see that because, I mean... What people are, so is, is, if you talk about political awareness, political maturity being there, I think it is about people seeing the country first. It is about people knowing that, oh, this is what is in the best interest of the country, and this is not what is in the best interest of the country, especially when it comes to election. It is about also people understanding that we must have diversity in a democracy. Democracy can be noisy, as Obama said, it can be messy, it can be complicated, but at the end of the day, we disagree to agree. So political maturity, the fundamental component of political maturity is when people realize that mm -hmm. we must have divergent views. We cannot all belong to this. But how to exercise tolerance? This is the most important thing. And like we, say, like we see in this country, I mean, the tolerance is not there. So it, it only shows how, I mean, parochial our political culture is, how, you know, I mean backward or archaic the people think about politics in this country we don't want to be tolerant to each other i mean we cannot belong to the same camp certainly and in order to exercise or to consolidate the democratic gains in this country we must be able to exercise tolerance high level of tolerance but then also like i said earlier on it is about political leaders also their supporters what we have seen of recent is about people attacking individuals uh -huh. character assassination mm -hmm. this is happening and some politics politicians are seeing this without talking mm -hmm. sometimes what people use as an excuse is that these are our members we cannot do anything about that mm -hmm. look there are some people who are not ordinary members of political parties when yeah. they speak they speak with authority yeah. you cannot be character assassinating people and political parties see that are normal mm -hmm. and then at the end of the day people also come and insult does them. it have to do with political parties themselves uh, or, they, or point, their leaders no, at some point it because has to for do example with when you say okay these are uncontrollable supporters doing supporters don't do this exactly so, it's about, so, it's so about so the kind of message so that they send it has to be a reflection of i see you see i, I remember 2017 yeah. there was this um a parliamentarian who was contesting i wouldn't i don't want to mention the name but you know when there was tension between the udp and aprc at some point you know see, can you imagine on a campaign flat platform saying that if they attack you attack them 
Oh this is not the kind of message that we expect. No, okay? We see people character assassinating people in this country. It is happening day and night on social media. Insulting tribes. Insulting insult tribes, insulting people, calling elderly, people names. Elder, elderly and it's coming people. from yeah. people. Like said, said here. I'm not yeah. sure whether it was during the discourse and out of the coup. You said yeah. when the, the founding fathers of this country took over the mantle of leadership of this country in 1965, we had less educated people. Yeah. Absolutely. But now we are talking about graduates, people with PhDs and masters. And can yeah. access and Facebook. Exactly. Yeah. We yeah. call them educated people and this is and how they behave. Connected. Yeah. Well, this it, is how it, they behave. It, it, it's it, a it, sad situation. I, I agree. The difference between the politicians of the yester generation and now mm, is maturity. maturity. Yeah, of it's course. Maturity. I it agree. It has to do with that. It's, it has so to be maturity. Pe people, people because have they have that. differences. I mean, you look at what happened. The, the difference between the protectorate and the colony yeah. was far greater yeah. and of the course. Exactly. was bigger. Exactly. But you look at how Sadaw the Jawara, you know, the I am Gabba Jumpa, how they were was. able to amicably solve that yeah. until they were yes. in, in fact, we, we had the during Jawara, during Jawara, exactly. Jawara uh, when Jawara passed away at the National mm. Assembly, exactly. Senior yeah. Jata Menson did. Yeah. Exactly. He said he, was, he would call opposition parties, opposition yeah. leaders to yeah. come and talk with them. How many of them were doing that? When Jame came, Jame never, I can't remember Jame sitting down. I mean, Jame was Another time. I but can't remember it. Like, well, I'm about equally uh, calling uh, these right. Now we should talk about that because that is what you should be talking about. Exactly. Baro should be there. That is why, in fact, kudos to CA. Well, let them not say I'm CA, <laughs> but then the leader of the CA has been going out since he came to, he was selected as a standard bearer. He has Absolutely. been going out to meet political party leaders. Yeah. The inter-party committee, I think, should be a force mm -hmm. to make sure that these politicians meet. Let it be monthly or to every two months. You see, that sense of nationalism must be there. We must see Gambia first. I, it is I, not I, about I, one I party, think it's about Esa, Gambia first. Esa, we can learn from the Ghanaian model. Um, before Ghana, prior to their um, elections, the president had a dialogue, a national discourse they, they, with the pos oppositions. So they, they, they had some discussion. Mm -hmm. I think Cerulean also did that. Uh, Madabio called upon the the, the opposition parties and then they have a discussion so I think also Gambia is lacking something uh, I think which the IPC would have been that institution to steer their affairs uh, when JJ Rawlings came into power and then they they established a peace institution the peace council in Ghana and it is working the peace council is an independent autonomy autonomous body that 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 institutionalized peace mm -hmm. Now, well, look I, at Ghana since then in their elections. Have you ever had Ghana going into turmoil during their elections? Yeah, it's a very small no. <laughs> so I think the IPC would have been that, that is the institution. Yeah. If we don't have a peace council now. No. Like, but no, now is the, the time IPC, that the IPC should facilitate that. That around exactly. the to be yes. That's why I said that is why I said yes. earlier when we were talking about UTG crisis, I yes. said. UTG should be the problem-solving institution in this country. Exactly. The University of the Gambia, there should have been a peace institute, whether it's going, they have a peace building, but not a peace institute. <laughs> <laughs> they should have created that peace institute, yeah. whether it's going to be yeah, under the faculty that. of or School of Arts and Sciences or which other faculty, yeah. but there should be that, where yeah. you see this sense of nationalism, yeah. this culture of tolerance, this culture of maturity should be, should, should, should be taught. Yeah. I mean, starting from the, from the young ones, the yeah. kids that are got, coming up, yeah. when you go to the university, University, you brought to this institution where some people will be specialized in this area. This is where we can preach the culture of tolerance. Gambia has been a tolerant society. We Absolutely. Need to do that. Of course, we have tolerance. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I think you mm. know, I think that's the way forward. I mean, yeah. you see, democracy must be must be adopted within the culture. It must be socialized. I mean, but for us, uh, we we are socialized. And as I started with saying maslaha, I mean. We, we need to end that but then there's the, the idea of maslaha is also is being tolerant being mm -hmm. acceptable and ensuring that what will not i mean um spoil or what will not i mean i cannot speak this, speak this language mm -hmm. but what will not what will not you know i mean change um people's perspective about their society need yeah. to be need to be addressed Absolutely. but today in this country lamin we yeah. don't understand and and these are issues that we continue to debate among ourselves mm -hmm. but we sit at there and then start to intellectualize it but in the reality the real impact is on the ground exactly how do we understand the the the, the, the traditional peace building mm -hmm. mechanism in mm -hmm. this country for instance ABR. i mean uh, you know what is the what is the role of the of the local authorities what is yeah. the role of the religious leaders because they also are part of the process and their particular role is about ensuring that people do not go beyond you know where they're supposed to where they're supposed and then the police and all those things because sometimes like as i mentioned the issue of identity 
I mean, you cannot connect that to the legality because the, at the end of the day, people go with their emotions, go with all those different issues. So it requires discussion, it requires talking, it requires education. And here, this is where also the political parties come. Political parties leave their education to civil society, but political education must start from yeah. the party itself. I agree. The party must have their structures, must have those things, exactly. and their education, like they have in, you know, their different sectors, mm -hmm. they exactly. must have an educational wing where they continue to educate their members on the laws, on the need for tolerance, on the need to collectivity, but also to be more, you know, mm -hmm. approaching and all that. But before just moving, I want yeah. to remind yeah. people of course, that this concert, yeah. it is, rock and you know, the rock. Rock the boat concert. concert. Mm. You can see it's the yeah, face the camera huh? properly. Yeah. I, I should face the camera. <laughs> it's the Rock the Boat concert mm. and it's funded by the CESO coalition and supported <laughs> by Kirfatu. Mm. And so our interest is to get young people and mm. everybody to participate in the political process and December is coming and then to ensure that there is um, election but now that the concert election. is nearer, how do mm -hmm. I? How do people who cannot access you or others holding the tickets should they turn up at the gate with their voters card? That would that be enough. I mean, what we, we not do first that they that. can contact. Yeah. I think MS can share those numbers. Yeah. Because, you know, we don't want to give. Those yeah. Exactly. Even even you know, if you come to Kirfatu. Oh, Kerfato. Yeah, here, yes, even have, if you come here yeah, with Chief Mati, just by yeah, the, yeah, I with myself, for some time with now, Activista, you know, with one app. You know, GPU, we have tickets there. Yeah, but you know, we have only a few hours at the concert. So but we'll have, we'll have some at the... At the yeah, place. but we are not encouraging we're people. Not encouraging Just people. reach okay. out right now. Okay. And then we get you. Yeah, we get you. Get you. One, wherever you are. Yeah. And then, oh, so okay. that the numbers are even on the uh, Kirfatus platform. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. on the Kirfatus so platform. People so, yeah, people okay. I mean, easily. so all we are interested as civil society organization. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no matter how we repeat this, people will not hear us because already they have grouped us, boxed us. <laughs> no, it's not is, clear now. No, no it's, it's, it's not. not but for us, what we are saying mm -hmm. is that our role in our society, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we will not take permission, yeah. we will not appease anybody, oh, yes. we will not please anyone, yes. and mm -hmm. we will do it because what we are interested in is in the continuity of the Gambia. Yeah. And yeah. we will do it today, we will do it tomorrow, we will do it yesterday, mm -hmm. and we will do it mm -hmm. next day. So mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to say, like, yes. um, like I said, this is a very good idea. Um, it, it, in fact, there could be another form of course, of this. Of course. Yes. Of course, the footballers are in the country right now. Yeah. Football is a unifying you know, game. Yeah. Footballers are right now in the country. Yeah. You know, they've just qualified the country. Yeah. Everybody's proud of them. But, but, but there's a, a, a bit of controversy to that too, isn't <laughs> it? No, 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 that's another thing. But then they, they can also use that. CSO coalition can use that as an opportunity yeah, to okay. say, hey, you know what? We call. want to get you people, yeah. the footballers, and then you know, yeah. We want yeah, to guide. I, I think I've started. I've seen Steve Trawale. He did a video. He did a video, okay. you know, okay. encouraging people well, to go and to go. Exactly. I think exactly. Salutal is definitely it, it's doing. It's not late. It's not good. late. He's reaching out to people. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, yeah, we can do that. Then, sure. I mean, the Scorpions yeah. are our sure. national heroes. I mean, agree. Everybody's proud of them now. Everybody yeah. wants to see um, the new Ibrahim Adabo. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, They yeah, want yeah, to see yeah, him in yeah, action. So yeah, probably people will be Dabo, Torres, and others. Maybe you, as the organizers, should even get them tonight by just a telephone call. They can come there. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we are reaching out to them. We are reaching out. I think. Salutary, reach out to them, yeah. um, those that we know, to yeah. see that they come. Because, Lamin, at the end of the day, you know, as much as we come here, discuss, mm. argue, mm. fight over Benachin, fight over whatever yeah. um, discussion, is the what is yeah. important is Gambia. Yeah. 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 Just, just, just to say, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. to say yeah. Yeah. that, you know, sometimes people take these things to be partisan, but yeah. they are not. You see, yeah. we can be political without being partisan. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. That, is, that, is, that is very clear. Nobody can say, claim that you are not political. Amen. We are all political. Of because course. The, every day we live in politics, yeah. Yeah. It's every day. It's daily. Absolutely. The governance and everything in this country is about politics. Yeah. So you, you know, football lives engaging in daily needs. sensitization yeah. and resistance doing that. Yeah. They are political, yes, mm. but they are not partisan. Yeah. Do you understand? So we have to differentiate these two. And yeah. then it's about just encouraging people to participate in the governance process of the country. Fantastic. And finally, I want to thank ST. I want to thank Tank Jizul, Bright Star, Killer Ace, Killer Ace our bling. Them, and oh, yeah. every artist, yeah. you know, that are coming forward. Because at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we can only say what we want, but it is their action, their willingness, yeah. their commitment. Mm -hmm. That's why we are having that. It is the artists, the civil society, the politicians, the yeah. business people, mm -hmm. the, 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 you know, Bantaba sitters, everybody. It yeah. is the collective effort that yeah. will move this country and not like me cutting my hand, you know, cutting other per per person's hand. That will not take the country anywhere. And I think, uh, you know, we just... Probably Mr. Cham also could be given a ticket. I think <laughs> <we are. laughs>
<laughs> no, you have to come with my voter's card now. So <laughs> no, I can, no, I'm not can, entitled. We can give. Turn over the gate today. No, we can my... give you a ticket. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> okay, I'll come there. Yeah. Right. Uh, Sedmati Jau, lecturer at the University of the Gambia, Esanjai, also lecturer at the University of the Gambia. Mohammed Esba is the vice president of the GPU, and all of them members of the civic society coalition organization, whatever you like. Thank uh. you very much for being on the brunch, and we hope you enjoyed the program. We will be back, of course, with a fresh topic or maybe a repeated one. So until then, Lamin Chan, wishing you have uh, a great weekend. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsel, Yaibarom. All your pastry, bakery, and quality food, CK Restaurant is the only place to be. We do catering for birthdays, weddings, and all related services. We have all kinds of local foods, American, European, and even beyond. Come and have a taste of our local juice, ebe and other services. At CK Restaurant, customer satisfaction is our priority. We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. InnovaRex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery 
Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve.